Hi, and welcome back to another ProQ2 tutorial. This time focusing on the EQ match features, which we find in the analyzer pop-up at the bottom of the interface, and which allows us to analyze two signals, then automatically create a corrective EQ curve to match one to the other. Here we have a wide-spaced pair of Omni condenser mics in the large live room at the Foundry in Sheffield, covering both drums and percussion for Renegade Brass Band. And the sound is a little unbalanced, with cymbals and hi-hats pulling to the right a bit. This type of thing can often be an issue with a widely spaced pair, as different elements of the source sound may project in different directions. But in this case, I've also got mismatched microphones, as all my stereo pairs were in use elsewhere on the session. So I've actually got an Earthworks mic on the left channel, and a Bayer Dynamic on the right. So I've loaded a mono Pro-Q2 for the right channel, but routed the left channel to the side chain. The side chain routing method will depend on your DAW and the plug-in format, so you might need to check the manual if you're not sure how to set this up. Now I'll click the EQ match from within the analyzer pocket, and choose side chain for the reference. And Pro-Q2 will start to analyze the two signals and plot a curve representing the difference between them. Once these traces settle down and stabilize, I can press the match button, and then drag the slider to set how many bands of EQ to use, up to the maximum of 24. I'll click finish, and the result is a very complex corrective EQ curve, which I'm unlikely to have ever arrived at manually. If we toggle bypass, we can hear that the corrected version sounds more balanced, with the symbols more centered. Of course, 24 bands of corrective EQ is probably a bit overkill, and I could choose to simplify this by removing some of the subtler bands in the mid-range. This scenario, where I'm matching the exact same performance recorded from different mics, is pretty much optimal, and the result's pretty much perfect. Let's take a look at another example, which needs a bit more manual input and tweaking. Here we have a baritone sax part, recorded in isolation as an overdub. And here we have another baritone sax overdub for a different section of the song, recorded on a different day with different mics. And actually, I think I got a better sound second time around. So let's use EQ Match to bring the two closer together. I'll open the EQ Match pop-up, then play the bad sounding part and let Pro-Q2 build up a spectrum. But notice that the analysis is picking up on individual harmonics in the lower end. The distinctive harmonic series patterns we see here are specific to those particular notes and might cause problems if the reference plays different notes. Okay, I have the good sounding parts on the same track so I'll switch the reference to input, then play the good sounding part. And we see the reference spectrum start to build up, along with the white corrective curve. And sure enough, we're seeing cuts and boosts in the low end caused by different notes being played on the reference, rather than a different timbre. If I apply this with a sensible number of bands and play the bad part again, Sure enough, those lower bands sound pretty weird and we need to clean them up. But the shaping of the upper mid and high frequencies is useful, as we can hear if I toggle bypass. Of course, with the two parts on the same tracks, we also need to disable the EQ for the parts that don't need correcting. So I'm going to automate the gain scale slider down to 0% for the good parts flattening all the EQ gains. And this method avoids any clicks or phase cancellation issues during the transition. Okay, so next I'll take a look at matching full mixes. This is arguably the best known use for EQ matching, but in reality it can be a bit hit and miss. Results tend to be best when matching mixes with similar arrangements. So I'm going to use mixes from a Humbar EP, which were recorded in the same session. 
I'll pick the best sounding mix and open the EQ match pop-up to start the analysis. Usually it's a good idea to pick a section of the song with all parts playing, such as a chorus, but in this case I'm using an instrumental section to avoid picking up on any strong harmonics from the vocal. Once the analysis settles down, I'll click the reference menu and save input as reference spectrum. Okay, let's pick another song and queue up an equivalent instrumental section. And I'll load up another instance of ProQ2 and open the match pop-up again. Let's hit play and learn the input spectrum for this song. And for the reference, I'll pick the spectrum I saved earlier. We probably only want a handful of bands in this case. I'll pick just four. And let's take the song back to the start to analyse the results. Normally we would want to avoid narrow cuts or boosts in the mid-range. This deep cut at about 400 hertz doesn't seem useful to me, so I'll get rid of that. The boost at 240 hertz is interesting, however. This is picking out the low fundamental of the snare drum. And I might choose to keep some of that, though probably not the full amount. Of course, this is only possible because it's the same snare drum as the reference, recorded in the same session with the same tuning. Further up, we find a wider cut at 1K6. I'm not convinced this one is needed. But if I do use it, it will once again be with much less gain than originally suggested. Finally, we have a fairly narrow boost at the top end. Again, I might choose to keep a little bit of this, with perhaps a wider cue. And this kind of high frequency boost over a full mix sometimes sounds more open and area if you switch to natural phase mode instead of zero latency. Full mix EQ matches nearly always need taming to some degree, either by reducing the band gains as I've done here, or by turning down the gain scale parameter, especially if you use references that are very different to your mix. There's nothing to stop you saving spectrums from your reference mixes, for example and you can organise these into subfolders to keep the reference menu tidy. But you might find that results are not what you expect. There is no single correct spectrum shape that you should be aiming for. Rather, every mix has its own unique signature. But it can be interesting to experiment with famous mixes and see what a wide range of different spectrums are acceptable. I would recommend turning on auto gain, however, to reduce any loudness differences and avoid any potential nasty shocks when you click the match button. OK, that's all for now. Look out for the next video, which will explore some more unusual and creative applications for the EQ match function. Thanks for watching.